Okay, okay. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you Alaykum all for today's wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of Taqwa Media, we would like to welcome you all. We are very excited to conduct the, this first online book launch and interview. We are joined by our dearest teacher uh, uh, and, and Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali. We would like to start by thanking you, Dr. Shamali, thank for you, your my time pleasure. today, and also congratulate you and your entire team on this momentous work of Islamic Plan for Life. Thank you very much, Allah bless you. The agenda for today is threefold. Uh, the first will be for 20 to 25 minutes. We will conduct an interview with you, Dr. Shamali, on, on, your, on this newest title. Uh, as I mentioned, the title is Islamic Plan for Life. This will be then followed by a Q&A uh, specifically regarding Islamic Plan for Life. And the audience will be, uh, will be able to ask their Q&A. And we would uh, humbly request that you please submit your questions uh, via the chat box here on Zoom. The third portion of this uh, uh, agenda will be the recitation of uh, Munajat al-Shabaniya, and that will be led by uh, our dearest Sheikh, inshallah. Inshallah. So um, without further ado, uh, dear Sheikh, if I have your permission, I would like to start with the first question. Yes, um, please. And, and, and we go from there, inshallah. Please, yes. Um, so, Dr. Shamali, the first question is, can you please share the overall purpose of writing Islamic Plan for Life? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-aliyya al-azim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al-masir. Alhamdulillah, uh, we had the tawfiq with a group of uh, brothers and sisters uh, initially in Qom, but then in other countries to work uh, on a series of five books. Uh, this is a particular project. There are other books that we have been working on uh, Islamic plan for life is the second volume of that series and the idea was to put together everything that a Shia youngster needs to know before going to college, university, work, or marrying. And we said, we don't want to take anything for granted. Some have been to madrasa, some have not been to madrasa, some maybe have you know, uh, studied a lot, some may not. We want to make sure that everything that they need to know would be put together in a very structured way with logical sequence of the ideas. And from the beginning, we were aware that there are also places in our community. And actually, the very first place that we had a communication with was Mombasa in Kenya, that we have a schools that many students might not be Shia. Also, in the world, we are very conscious of, uh, you know, our unity with our Sunni brothers and sisters. So we said, although the book is written, uh, is going to be written for the Shia, but we can make uh, two books in the way that can be for all Muslims. So Islamic belief system and Islamic plan for life are two volumes of these uh, five that are written for Sunni and Shia. And... Uh, for example, in Islamic belief system, as you know, we don't have discussion about Imam because we have a separate volume. Or in Islamic uh, plan for life, we don't go into the details of Ahkam because we have another volume for Ahkam according to the fatwas of our Maraj. Here, the idea is to give what Islam 
across different madhahib and denominations offers as a package for life, personal life, social life, uh, family life, and what Islam has produced as a culture and civilization. Of course, if there is time, I can give a, a little uh, breakdown of the subjects of the book. Uh, would you like to give the breakdown of the book right now, Shekhna, or would you like to... It's up to you. ...some of the other questions, and then maybe give the breakdown later. What's, what, what would you whatever like? you would like. Please go ahead and give the breakdown right now, Shekhna. Okay. Uh, in Islamic belief system, as you know, our last unit is about sa'ad, felicity, happiness. Because we start with knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then knowing human beings, then Allah's uh, way of guiding human beings through uh, reason and revelation. Then we have prophethood in general and a specific prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Quran. And then about the hereafter. And then we say it all is to help us achieve happiness or felicity or sa'ad. Normally in the books on Aqaid, there is no discussion about Sa'ada, but we thought it's very important because people should know what we will achieve if we go by Allah's you know, guidance. Uh, happiness for individuals, happiness for society, happiness in dunya, happiness in akhirah. So that's the last unit of Islamic belief system. Now, logically, what follows is how we can achieve that happiness based on the guidance that we have received from God. So Islamic plan for life is the answer to this question, which is raised logically in the minds of readers when they are finishing Islamic belief system. Of course, it can be read by itself, but if someone wants to have a systematic approach. So in Islamic plan for life, we want to say, what's the plan that we should have in our life so that we can achieve that happiness of individual and community, dunya and akhirah. It starts with a section on self-purification and ethics. So about our morals, about virtues, whether it be personal or social. Both of them are discussed here. And we have tried to carefully choose because there are, mashallah, many, many books on akhlaq, but we try to choose what we as uh, people who want to be uh, successful members of community and also successful members of society, especially youngsters, when they are beginning their journey, they need to know. For example, one of the things that we have highlighted is the need for punctuality and for being, you know, organized uh, based on Imam Ali and other instructions that we have that usikum wa amrikum. Maybe not that much emphasis is put on uh, being organized and punctual in many books on akhlaq because they may take it as something that people should know it by themselves. But we said, no, we have to highlight it. In any case, the first section is personal and interpersonal or social morals. After that, we go to the behavioral system because Islam starts with purification of oneself and equipping yourself with virtues and removing vices. But then we go to the behavior. What is the general framework that Islam has given us for behavior? So we talk about, again, personal behavior and social behavior. We talk about Salat. What is the philosophy of the Salat? The main structure of Salat. But we don't go to the details in Fiqh case because that is something for which we have another book. And also we want to keep it general for all Muslims. Uh, we talk about, for example, when we talk about Salat, we talk about Salat al Jama'ah, we talk about Masjid, the function of Masjid, Imam of Masjid, educational role of Masjid. Many things come there. Very carefully, we try to uh, 
uh, identify these issues about fasting about hajj and other things about the social behavior uh, for example how to interact with you know namahram with a stranger uh, after this we go to how islam looks into family because family is a very important part of islamic plan for life so we talk about family marriage and so on and so forth after that we go to society so individual family society how in particular islam brings order and justice and welfare to our social life justice through judiciary system of islam order through islamic governance and welfare through islamic economics and social care so we have a brief discussion about this then we go to the discussion about islamic culture and civilization and identity so this is the brief breakdown of the book islamic plan for life and we hope every muslim would be very happy to read this book but of course uh, we are very much uh, relying on the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. Jazakallah, Sheikh, now. Yeah, well. um, so the second question, or the part of the question, and, and um, it's going to be slightly different from uh, from what I've previously shared with you. That's fine. Um, so the question is, is the preface of Islamic plan for, in the preface of Islamic plan for life, you speak about the five series, and you even spoke about the five series right now. So can you speak about the overall vision of the entire project, which, you, which you've already highlighted, and there's the overlap. The, the unique question that I wanted to not only add is, uh, not only are you looking at it from a content vision, from a content perspective for all five, but there is a, there is a pedagogical approach you have used. Um, can you speak to not only the vision from a content perspective, but also from a pedagogical perspective, inshallah? Okay. Yes. So this goes back to uh, more than 10 years ago when we started uh, preparing the outlines of these books. We try to review any books written on Islam in general by Muslims and non-Muslims, especially in English. We went through their, you know, contents, especially the outlines, the design, the order, the structure. And then we started drafting what we thought would be based on our experience, uh, more maybe suitable for this age. And at least about 30 sessions with some young scholars I sat to just draft the outlines 30 sessions and then through my travels to different countries I shared it with people who are involved in education in our community even people who may not be involved in Islamic education but they are teachers you know, in the public schools, but also with the scholars, with, you know, people who teach in madrasa, people who run madrasa, with many, many people, I shared this. And actually, the outlines by themselves, alhamdulillah, very useful. So, for example, uh, in Tanzania, one of the big organizations that, you know, is there, uh, they started from a few years ago, using the outlines of these five books for the whole Islamic studies department that they have. Yes, then, alhamdulillah, we started compiling. It was much easier to ask one person to write the book, but we wanted to be a teamwork. So many, many people were involved, uh, writing, discussing, doing mubahasa over this, you know, uh, lots of work has been done. And also we said we don't publish it unless we have already tried it. So Islamic belief system was being taught 
uh, some of you may remember in Toronto, in other places, you know, in Hamburg, in London, in Birmingham, uh, we taught it by, you know, duplicating, by photocopying. Then we finally printed Islamic Plan for Life. For example, I have a series on Islamic Plan for Life in Stanmore, and that is just based on the outlines. The book was not yet, you know, compiled. So, uh, Islamic beliefs, uh, belief system and Islamic plan for life are two volumes of this series. Then we have a whole volume on Imama, and that is covering Imama in general, but also very much focusing on the way to relate to Imam. Knowing of Imam, loving of Imam, Tabassul, Ziyara, Shafa'a, all are there. And then ends with Imam Mahdi, Allah Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. Then we have one volume on Ahkam and one volume on the history of Shia from the time of early Islam up to the current century, highlighting the leadership of. Uh, Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam and after the time of Qayba started highlighting the leadership of our ulama and just last night I was getting the recent update Alhamdulillah the first volume of the history of Shia Islam is ready uh, and it's now being discussed and uh, discussion is also finished uh, they just need to make the boxes and you know educational you know support and uh, the second is written by the writer but the team has to discuss so inshallah gr gradually all these uh, five will be completed now we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that alhamdulillah Islamic belief system is now available in English in Farsi in Arabic uh, in Urdu in Spanish, in Thai, and in Italian. Inshallah, we hope other languages would come. And Islamic Plan for Life is now, alhamdulillah, the book that we are talking about, which is available now in English and Farsi, alhamdulillah. May, may Allah give the, the, you and the t entire team more tawfiq as you continue the, the efforts. Uh, um, Amen. Um, my, my third question uh, or the third question is, you, you've addressed it briefly, and I'm just trying to uh, go in a little more specific. So you speak uh, to the um, to the audience of Islamic Plan for Life, and, and you've addressed it that it's, it's for both uh, Shia and Sunni. Are there particular categories of, of individuals and types of individuals that can especially benefit from Islamic Plan for Life? Our hope is that inshallah in future every person by the time they finish high school they should have this much of knowledge but at the moment this is too ambitious because prior to this we have alhamdulillah some good you know textbooks for madrasa or you know for islamic schools whatever but it's still is a big difference, big distance. Therefore, right now what we do, we even uh, teach this to teachers, to uh, scholars. We teach this in the seminary, you know, in, uh, in English, in first year, second year, uh, which is, alhamdulillah, welcome. But hopefully, inshallah, little by little, when the level of Islamic education in our community uh, grows, deeper and higher, then we hope that every Shia teenager before finishes his or her teenage would know enough to cover these five books. This is what we are trying to standardize. And you know, I am very concerned over the years that by the expansion of our community almost all over the world and then speaking different languages and some of them they don't know the main languages that the Shia used to speak you know if you go 40 50 years ago most of the Shia spoke Arabic Farsi Turkish Urdu and 
you know, these languages, Farsi, Arabic, Turkish, Urdu, maybe I am missing something, but these are the languages that were spoken. But now you have almost everywhere Shia. And many of them, they don't speak anymore even their you know, mother tongue, or they're not very comfortable with that. So our education system has to quickly uh, reach out to all these communities and all these languages, plus many questions, many challenges are there. So I am very concerned that if we don't work hard in this decade, then a gap can be created, especially for the people who are not very much connected to our hosas and they don't, you know, read uh, the texts in Arabic, Farsi, you know, main languages that uh, our community is using. And then we may, God forbid, inshallah, this would never happen. But I am worried that if we don't work properly, we may end up with a situation that we would have pockets of the Shia community in different places that they little by little develop their own understanding. So we have to work very, uh, of course, wisely, but at the same time, a speed is also important, accuracy is very important, that we create educational packages that can not only educate our people, but can keep our community also still united in their understanding of their faith. So we hope that inshallah these books and other books that other you know people are producing plus educational programs courses you know lots of visits interactions help our community to grow together not to grow you know in different places in a different ways yeah yeah i mean Sheikh, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, this leads to the next question, and you, you already alluded to some of this uh, in, in, your, uh, in your comments. So life is comprised of mind, body, and soul. In the secular society we live in, there is a lot of emphasis on mind and body with little to no emphasis in developing one's soul. For example, children are pushed to putting a plan post high school towards a certain career, and they undertake the study in a formalized and structured manner. We see a similar approach to body through diet and exercise, but we don't see a formalized and structured approach to our soul that is ubiquitous, that is across all communities. How, how can Islamic plan for life and the five series assist families to solve this particular problem? Yes, actually, uh, this is a very important uh, issue. Unfortunately, uh, humanity, because of different factors, has not always grown in a holistic and in a balanced way. Sometimes we have taken one aspect and forgotten other aspects. In this age, for the most part, not everywhere, but for the most part, unfortunately, the soul, the spirituality is neglected. Of course, I'm saying for the most part, because there are many people who have taken it very seriously and there are many types of spiritualities. And actually, we have now problems that there are some spiritualities that are not well grounded. But for the most part, the modern way of life is more geared towards meeting your physical needs and, you know, actually, uh, you know, satisfying your, uh, you know, uh, immediate and short-term desires, which are normally physical desires. Not that much emphasis is put, for the most part, in the modern life on soul, condition of the soul, virtues of the soul, vices of the soul, self-purification, self-monitoring, self-criticizing, you know, criticizing. You know, having a spiritual mentors, having, you know, a spiritual exercise and practices, contemplation, uh, prayer, not, it's not unfortunately a current team. If you go to a Western university or even in the East, sometimes uh, to a university, to a college, this is not normally uh, what you receive, which is totally different from the past. Uh, many of these universities were not secular. Many of these universities actually used to be 
uh, you know, seminaries used to be supported by, you know, Christian, you know, congregations. Even, you know, Oxford, Cambridge, you know, these were seminaries. So faith has inspired founders of these universities. But unfortunately, little by little, they have become too much secularized. So Islamic plan for life is trying to bring a balance. We talk about, you know, our social life and social responsibilities, but and also about civilization, which is the uh, external manifestation of faith, you know, civilization, the external manifestation of faith. But we also try to very much remind everyone of the need for spirituality and for akhlaq, for ethics. Um, the next question, Sheikhna, um, is can a family undertake Islamic plan for life as an independent study? If so, what are practical tips? We hope, of course, these books are uh, being uh, checked. We receive feedback and every few years we try to revise them. The Islamic belief system already is now the second edition and the translation of Islamic belief system actually started, we said from the beginning, we translate when the second edition is ready. So every few years we are going to revise these books. Uh, this is human product. But even so far, I'm not saying I am pleased with these books, but even so far, I think there is something that we can be benefiting as a community, as families, as individuals. So it has been written in the way that people can read by themselves. But if they have teacher, if they have classes, if they discuss it, they understand better. So if you don't have any class, you can read it yourself and you can understand. You can benefit a lot, but you can better grasp the ideas if there is a teacher who can teach. And if you also do mubahasa, discussion is very important. Alhamdulillah, we have been trying hard to offer courses on these books in different places and then put the material online for people who have no access to classes or to teachers. Uh, we have tried to support them. But uh, it's very good if uh, people, if they have a local scholar to ask them to teach or if they are part of a program like KLC, you know, to watch the lectures, to discuss, to have exams on these books. So uh, the answer is families can benefit from this book by self-study, but they can benefit more if they make it like a textbook for a kind of formal educational program. Uh, Shefna, the, the next question um, is, uh, given, we are soon given we are soon approaching the peak of the spiritual season, on page 38 under the repentance section, yes. You shared a hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam, where he said, we do not want to die unless we repent. However, we do not repent until we finally die. Can you please expand on this hadith? Yeah. Thank you. This hadith is actually what Ibn Abil Hadid in his commentary on Nahjul Balaqa has mentioned. It's in volume 20, page 329. And the original text in Arabic is this. Nahnu nuridu allanamut hatta natub. Wa nahnu la natub hatta namut. When it comes to us, we love not to die before repenting. Yeah, we don't want to die while our sins are not forgiven. So we want to 
repent before dying. But the problem is that we delay Tawbah and repentance till we die. So this is the problem. We postpone, you know, this is Tasweef. In Arabic, we say Tasweef means to postpone, to delay, to say tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, you say, you know, tomorrow. So Toba should not be delayed because first of all, who knows that you are going to have Tawfiq to do Toba later. Plus, when problems remain with us for a longer period, to come out of them becomes more difficult. Rumi has a beautiful analogy, you know, as he has a story. He says, you know, a person had some plants outside his home, which had thorns. And these thorns were hurting people who were passing by. People complained to him, you know, please remove this. This is a public passage, you know, people are passing. And he was not taking it seriously. He was, you know, postponing. Then a time came after some years that he decided to remove it. But by that time, this had become very huge, like a tree with roots well established. And he had become very old. So he was becoming weaker and weaker. And that plant was becoming stronger and stronger. So he couldn't, you know, remove it. So this is the problem with us. When I am younger, I can repent faster, more easily. I can change myself more easily. I can acquire good qualities, develop good habits much more easily. We should not delay. We should not say, uh, you know, when I retire, when I become older, when I don't need you know, to work hard, there would be plenty of time and I will do Toba then. No. So the best thing is that actually we do Toba even tonight. It's the night of Juma in the month of Shaba. We must make sure that we do Toba tonight, not even tomorrow. In the month of Shaban, not even leave it for the month of Ramadan. But because we never want to take any chance, we should keep repenting and repenting. And inshallah, in this month, month of Ramadan, we have lots of opportunities to repent and make sure that our repentance then is really sincere, is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, my last question before we look to the chat to see who has submitted questions um, is, is, you know, inshallah, people will be listening from all over the world. So how do people gain access to the print copy if you're living in the United States or in Canada, in the UK? And also, you know, can you speak to the digital copies uh, that are available in, in, in some of the different platforms, inshallah? Uh one of my main concerns over years is actually about distribution of the books. And this is an area that we need to work hard to have a very efficient and uh, inclusive way of distributing books. Uh, we have still some distance. But what is now available is that uh, Islamic Plan for Life as digital, it is available on ICE books on Apple. And also uh, our KLC uh, brothers and sisters uh, in Canada and US and UK can have access through KLC network. But also Tagawa Media that I also should thank you and Sister Sajida is responsible and is working uh, closely with us for distributing this book in the US and beyond, of course, because of expensive, you know, postage, you know, so maybe it's limited, but if there is a need, so anyone through KLC Network and through Taqwa Media can order, Alhamdulillah, we have had orders from Australia, uh, so it's uh, possible, 
but inshallah we should find some local also distributors that can provide these books so at the same time that we are trying hard to compile these books we are also trying hard to establish uh, you know network of people with whom we can inshallah run courses in different parts of the community and make these books available inshallah because all these should come together if you just write the best books of the world but no one knows about them no one has access to them your job is incomplete you have not done your proper job so uh, compiling books is very important teaching them is very important but also providing platforms for reading studying is also very important and here i ask everyone to pray and also share their ideas about how we can inshallah have a net for uh, reaching out and offering our courses like klc program like MOOC program or the books to any person so far it's mostly english speaking but we have also other books coming you know islamic belief system now is being translated for example into french also so we are going to start you know inshallah some programs in french uh, we have some books in other uh, languages so inshallah little by little or maybe not little by little maybe <laughs> more than little by little we should reach out so i ask everyone to pray and to offer their help their advice so that how can we establish such a network inshallah Hello, Sheikh Nath, thank you so much. You know, it, uh, just uh, on a distribution perspective, this has been, we've been talking for a very long time regarding this and in, 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 in the reflection and to realize that it's really a, a numbers game, right? If, if you print 500 and you sell 500, then it's, or you, you have 500 people adopt, right? Versus if in a community of, of, of Muslims that are 1 billion, uh, 1, 1 billion over, Right? Even if you can get 10% or 15% of those adopting it, right? that, that dynamics change very, very much. So I think I, I really like the idea of you are sharing about uh, the idea that we can all share in this effort. And by us sharing, you know, then more and more people can gain access through social media and, and all of those things. Awesome. I, I'm going to look for the questions um, that are being submitted. Um, um, I guess, so the question is, uh, can there be a, to purchase it through amazon.ca? Uh, Shefna, is, is it available all, all on all Amazon platforms, including Amazon Canada? Uh, we are working on that. I don't know if it is finalized or not. Maybe if Sister Adila has some extra information, but the idea was that the books become available on amazon.com uh, and .ca yeah so yeah I, I, the, the, so i see the answer somebody wrote is available only on kindle for right now and, and inshallah um we, uh, i guess there is effort to try and make it available on hard copy as well inshallah, inshallah. um I'm just, i just want to see if there are any, any other um questions uh, by the way, our KLC brothers and sisters in Toronto, in Ottawa, in Vancouver, in the US, uh, if you still don't have the books, you know, please contact your uh, uh, local uh, brother or sister who is helping with distribution of the books, because Alhamdulillah, some copies have been sent out. Uh, so please you know reach out to them and if more copies are needed we can inshallah then uh, send more copies uh, because they go from the us so it shouldn't take that long yes i would like to just uh, um, just confirm that point uh, sister adila has confirmed with us that we are taking the for anybody who's taking the two year islamic studies program they will be receiving their copy of the Islamic plan for life as part of the program package. And for other students who like to have a copy of this Islamic plan for life, but are not yet in the two year Islamic studies program, they can order their copy of the book by going to the request a book in the student portal. There's a request a book 
uh, menu item in the student portal and they can uh, order the book from the KLC uh, for KLC students. Yes. And I would also like to request uh, everyone uh, to introduce Islamic belief system and Islamic plan for life to their local community. This is also a great help. And inshallah, you will be sharing the reward of production of this book. Uh, you know, distribution is also very important. So if there are scholars, if there are, you know, madrasas, schools, houses uh, in your local community, or maybe in the another part of the world, but you have some connections. So my uh, humble request is to uh, introduce these books to them. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, there are many people who are interested in such materials, but they just don't know. So if you can help to uh, reach out, introduce these books to them, uh, it would be great. Alhamdulillah, we don't have, you know, uh, financial interest in this project. And, you know, the amount of uh, efforts and money which are put in the project can never be, you know, even if we sell thousands of copies, you know. But the thing is that when one more person reads the book, we feel, you know, energized. We feel, you know, our work has been uh, useful. Of course, even if no one reads, still, inshallah, uh, we have done our job. But it gives energy because we are human beings. And we are not like Prophet Nuh, who was, you know, Ulul Azm. So when we see and our team, which some of you are also part of our team who have helped with, you know, editing, proofreading, many things, translation. Uh, our team is also partly, including you, partly people in home and other places. So when our team sees that the more books are read and more people are benefiting, it gives extra energy. So if you can help uh, with introducing these books, if a madrasa can adopt this for you, because, you know, many madrasas, they just have program up to 14, 15 years old. And they are actually looking for material to use for post mattress. If you can introduce, if you can make it a textbook, if you can, you know, reach out to your local scholars, resident alims, imams, uh, Sunnis, Shias, we would be very grateful and may Allah, inshallah, bless you. If not, um, during our experiences at different conferences, when we have presented Islamic belief system, as well as other material, and we've used the YouTube channel uh, that, that you have, mm. there has been lots of interest um, amongst many, many people. But to your point, I think, you know, it really requires the grassroots efforts that, that we can all do because it, re it, it requires consistent reminders and connections and showing how the material can be used. And I think slow and steady by doing it this way, it can it can really increase the the interest and, and the other place that I think can also be helpful is libraries for example yes you know, and, and, and you know slow and, in public libraries and, and, and so on and so forth um, and 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 you know not only you know only one denomination like Shias even for Islamic belief and Islamic plan even even Sunni communities and, and so on yes. and so forth so those are, these are some ideas um, I just got a question. Um, There was a question that came and I'm not able to see it. Um, give me a minute. Oh, here is a question. Salam, at our Sunday school, many parents have an interest in parenting Islamic way. Which book would uh, would you recommend Dr. Shamali for Islamic parenting or parenting in the Islamic way? If it is just about parenting, uh, because parenting is uh, by itself a subject. But if it is something that you need to help you with parenting, that's another issue. These books can help you with parenting. But uh, if you want a specific books about what you have to observe as parenting, is, and that also varies in different ages, then this is not specifically for that kind of you know purpose. And uh, th there are some books, uh, 
uh, in different languages, like especially Farsi and Arabic. In English, uh, what I remember is a book that was written by uh, one of our uh, two of members of our community here in uh, Stamur, you know, brother Abbas Mirali and Shaheen Mirali, and uh, about parenting, which uh, they have also lots of workshops, and you know, uh, I uh, think that's a good book. But maybe there are other books. Unfortunately, there are not that many. But maybe there are more. I haven't specifically research what are available in English about this subject. So Islamic plan for life can help you, but it is not specifically written for people who want to do parenting. Another question is, um, has the Sheikh ever thought of verifying his profile on Google? So that his bio books can be sh shown professionally when his name is searched up on Google. I guess, uh, Sheikh, the question is: uh, Has there been an effort around search engine optimization uh, and, and that kind of stuff? Is really sort of the, the summary of the question. Uh, no, unfortunately, I haven't uh, done this, and uh, maybe this is something that, inshallah, we can look into it. Yes, I, yes, inshallah, we can, we can, inshallah, look into it, inshallah. Um, I don't have any other uh, questions coming in as of yet. Um, I do have the, um, yeah, I don't have any other questions coming in right now. Okay. So maybe we can start with the Munajat. Um, sure. I, I think um, there was a message that said the name of the book uh, is, that, that by Abbas and Shaheen Mirali is titled From Marriage to Parenthood. Yeah. Very good. By the way, do you want to show the book also? Or no? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I have the book. Give me a second. Oh, which you're talking about the, the, the Islamic Plan for Life book? Yeah, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. So here, here is the book. It was it's also very beautiful on your shelf, Sheikh, to your right. I, I see it as well. <laughs> yes, it's here. <laughs> I know, it's, it's maybe maybe the uh, you know. And so, Sheikh, one of the things that I like about this book very much is how it's it's the you know it's really the textbook format and the ease of reading, uh, and 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 how everything is so you know organized with with all the images and and and, and so on and so forth. I love bless you and the entire team for making it such easily from even from a pedagogy perspective. So, uh -huh. Farouk, is it possible to go back a bit so we can see the book? It's full of light right now. Like, <laughs> okay, <light>. sorry. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Is, that... other than light. <laughs> is it is here so more is... visible or or maybe lower? Yeah, I think the Sheikh has a better lighting with, with the book. Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe you maybe you can do the the, the picture of maybe you can uh, show it yeah. better. I think. Of course, inside would be difficult, but uh, yeah. I think uh, if they go to the uh, iBooks, you, they will see pictures. You know, and one of the one of the things uh, one of the things we uh, have planned was to have. Uh, when there is opportunity, some sections about introducing our ulama, like Allama Tabatabai, Ayatollah Mutahari, you know, these great scholars also to introduce them. Uh, plus there are many uh, boxes, for example, progress tracking, uh, case studies, discussion activity, think about. So these are also there because our idea was that uh, when people take, you know, a book for their college on chemistry, physics, you know, you see biology, they are very attractive. And Islamic books should be the best. So we should not just be satisfied with having good co content. The way we present is also very important. Uh, so we hope that, inshallah, uh, it would be something that would attract people to read. I, I, I had shared it with one of um, 
um, one of my colleagues, a, non, a non-Muslim colleague, uh, and, and he had, uh, I, I still need to reach back out to him, but he even he had uh, indicated how he, f- he really liked it. He had seen it from the iBook store, uh-huh. and he, he really appreciated uh, the, the methodology. Alhamdulillah. Um, there's another question coming in. Sheikh, how much time do we have? We have, uh, I think, two or questions have come in. Two more questions have come in. Yeah. Do we have time? Inshallah. Um, so uh, just, just bear with me while I... So th- one question is, is there an Arabic version? Is one question. Yeah, in... coming soon, inshallah. Yeah. I think it's a translation, I think, must be done already. Inshallah, comes soon. Islamic belief system already is in Arabic. This inshallah coming soon. And, and there was a message that, that said that the pictures can also be seen on, on Taqwa Media. Uh, on Taqwa Media, uh, you, you can see some of the pictures in there besides the iBook. Yeah. And then, and then the next question was um, Salamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum the books salam. are beautif- beautifully and surely is packed with wisdom. My challenge as a parent is to present it in an interesting manner for my daughter, who reads adventure novels, and hence to her. That is much more interesting. Any tips on how to make these important books attractive to our youth? Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Yes. I hope, inshallah, uh, you would find it uh, helpful in this regard. And we also welcome your ideas, your suggestions. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, uh, people who have helped with uh, compiling, with reviewing, with re- editing, proofreading, with design. But uh, still, we need help. And if uh, brothers, sisters have a special skill and they can help and they are not already, uh, you know, known. So if they can reach out to KLC admin and, you know, tell us that, for example, I can help with this, I can help with this, it would be very uh, grateful. Of course, uh, we don't want to exhaust anyone. Uh, We uh, we prefer if people themselves, you know, reach out and say, you know, I have this much time, I have this skill, I can do this. Uh, because this is, uh, the barakah is when we go together. Yadullah ma'al jama'ah. Sorry, Sheikh, now my, my office phone is ringing. Just bear with me. Yes. Just trying to turn it off. Sorry about that. Um... One of the ways, uh, Shekhna, with, with our two boys, uh, we have tried to bring is we've taken bits and pieces for them. So we recognize that it's not going to be, it's not going to be, you know, um, it's not going to be like, you know, an adventure novel. But what we've done is we've taken a page and then we've we've tried to have a conversation around it or taken a, you know, a section and had a conversation around it. So and by doing it this way, we've tried to generate interest, but, it, but because this book is not designed for reading like an adventure novel, you know, by, by themselves, it's, it's more designed. So that's one of the things that as parents, we've tried to bring it in our own home yeah. um, and, 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 and work in that regard as well. Shekhan. That's a very good idea. Shekhan, I, I, I don't have any more questions, inshallah. So maybe we can, you can inshallah. lead us with uh, uh, Munajah Shabaniya, inshallah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.